What's up, fellas? I feel the need for speed. This looks familiar. This is the classic 1983 Kawasaki GPZ 900 first year of production. This is the 84 model. In 85, it was made famous in the movie Top Gun. It also won the Isle of Man TT production class. Not only won it in 83, but also got second place. So it is a really, really iconic piece of machinery. Ridden by our, our Isle of Man veteran, Bill Blythe. This thing's just been super tuned by the Manic Mechanic. He went right through it, adjusted the valves, rebuilt the carburetors. It's an absolutely stunning piece. The GPZ 900R, also known as the ZX900A or the Ninja 900, is the first motorcycle that was is a motorcycle that was manufactured by Kawasaki from '84 to 2003, basically 20 model years. It is the earliest first member of the Ninja family of sport bikes. The, the GPZ 900R was a revolutionary design that became the immediate predecessor of the modern sport bike. Developed in secret over six years, it was Kawasaki's in the world's first 16-valve liquid-cooled inline four-cylinder motorcycle engine. The 908cc four-cylinder engine delivers 115 horsepower, allowing the bike to reach speeds of 151 miles per hour, making it the first stock road bike to, to exceed 150 miles per hour. You want to throw it up on the center stand, Bill? Uh, prior to its design, Kawasaki envisioned producing a sub-liter engine that would be the successor to the Z1. Although it's steel frame, 16-inch front, and 18-inch rear wheels, Air suspension and anti-dive forks were fairly standard at the time. The narrow compact engine was mounted lower in the frame, allowing it to take Japanese superbike performance to a new level. Six months after being unveiled to the press in December 1983, dealers entered three works GPZ 900Rs in the Isle of Man production TT, finishing in first and second places, which is kind of unheard of for a new bike to do that. Um, the technical advances included water cooling, 16 valves, which allowed additional power and still run cool, and a frame that used the engine as a stressed member for improved handling and reduced weight as a result of testing that showed that the standard down tubes carried virtually no weight and could be eliminated. Its top speed gave it the title in 1984 as the world's fastest production bike at that time and standing quarter mile times of a blistering 10.976 seconds or 10 and a half seconds recorded by specialist rider J. P. Wee Gleason. The 1984 GPZ 900R was the first Kawasaki bike to be officially marketed in North America under the Ninja brand name. In spite of its performance, the GPZ 900R was smooth and rideable in urban traffic owing to the new suspension and a crankshaft counterbalancer that nearly eliminated secondary vibration. The fairing's aerodynamics combined with good overall ergonomics enabled comfortable long distance riding. The GPZ 1000 RX was, the, was the, going to be the replacement for the 900R in 86, but the Ninja 900 continued alongside the GPZ 1000. In 1988, the GPZ 1000 was replaced by the ZX10, yet still the GPZ 900 remained. So the GPZ 900 lost its title as the flagship model in 1990, but continued with some revisions of the fork, wheels, brakes, and airbox until 1993 in Europe, a 20-year run. And actually, they only, they only sold these in the United States of America here in 84, 85, and 86, uh, but was continued until 2003 in Japan because it was such a fantastic machine. The, D, the GPZ 900, as I said earlier, was featured in the movie Top Gun, where it became a cultural icon. If you haven't watched Top Gun in a while, put it on tonight. It's a kick-ass movie, great music, great soundtrack. Tom Cruise and his team knocked it out of the park with that movie. They're supposed to be doing a, a sequel to it, uh, but I don't know when that's going to happen. So um, 84 to 2003, uh, 908cc, 151 mile per hour top speed, 115 horsepower, six speed constant mesh, um, fork, air forks on the front, uni track in the rear, uh, triple disc brakes, just a fantastic piece and it only weighs 503 pounds so it's light, fast, and guys, uh, there aren't many of these left, man, not in this kind of shape. The gentleman we bought this from, if you remember the video a few weeks ago, he came in on a Saturday with not but one, but two of these on the back of a trailer and check out this license plate that's on here uh gpz 900 ride safe how cool is that that's staying in the museum uh, that can't go with the bike but uh as you can see uh it's got a new chain on it uh i'll go over the work order we did quite a bit of work on the bike here when we got it in give me a second i'll grab that i also have clean title to the motorcycle in hand here um as you can see i've got title and registration previous registration for it and work order man and mechanic went right through the bike adjusted the valves 
uh, took the carbs off, dismantled them, cleaned and tuned the carburetors. He also micro drilled the pilot jets. They came with very lean pilot jets, something only a, a man of his uh, mechanical expertise would know how to do. Uh, so it doesn't run lean when you first start it. Uh, the oil and filter is, is new. Uh, he also replaced the cam chain tensioners, replaced the air box air boots, and installed a brand new battery on it. The previous owner had put these nice Metzler tires on it. As you can see, it still has the hairy nubs on the front tires. Uh, very little use on those, and also it has a new chain on it. Original bodywork is in fantastic condition. So 84, what does that make it? 30, almost 38 years old. Um, has a new windscreen on it, uh, the tinted windscreen. The levers are in real nice shape. If you look closely, there's no evidence of this bike being dropped on the pegs or the levers. Uh, pretty remarkable for a bike of this age to be in this kind of condition. And the paint is all original on it. This is not a restored. This is a uh, preserved motorcycle. He had two of these. The other one he bought brand new in 84. He has a twin to this one. So um, just a fantastic piece. The uh, fighting red with the black and gold and the dark gray. Just a beautiful, iconic motorcycle. The... Um, Inlet fleet no float needle va valves are all new too, uh, and it has a new OEM cam chain tensioner and everything else I mentioned. It went into the detail shop. It was hot water steam cleaned, hand washed, degreased they, from top to bottom. Uh, they they uh, buffed and polished all the painted surfaces. They uh, repainted the engine in some areas. Re they completely repainted the center stand and the kickstand, touched up the hand controls. Uh, the gas tank and the fairing were, were uh, all the plastic parts and painted parts were buffed and then polished and then uh, waxed. The, um, all the aluminum parts were cleaned and polished. The uh, windshield was cleaned. That was already had been replaced. And the mirrors it basically went through the, did what we call the rotisserie detail, touched up the calipers. There's a seat cover patch on here somewhere. Um, noted in, he put a vinyl uh, repair kit right here on the original seat cover, which seems to be holding nicely. It's not cosmetically perfect, but uh, you know, it's the original seat cover 38 years later. So the total on the work order with parts and labor came to $3,163, so just under $3,200. It's a stunning classic, ready for another 36 years. And uh, Billy, anything you'd like to add about this bike? Well, I find it remarkable that the bike, these bikes the, with the works team won at the Isle of Man in 83, first and second in the production TT. That's a big one. Every manufacturer wants to win over there, especially when they have a new model. And uh, it's the proving ground for the reliability and durability of a machine because that track will rattle any bike apart. So for them to come out with a brand new bike and win first and second in their first effort at the TT is remarkable. Now, Ken, I can see he need, he has the need for speed right now. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. All right, starts right up, idles. You feel like you're on an airplane on this thing. It's just air you you feel like you're on an airplane on an airplane sitting on this thing. It's just the cockpit is uh, really nice, and the fairing keeps you out of the wind. Let's see if it'll do 151 miles an hour, boys. <laughs> there she goes. Guys, it's really hard to find these in nice original condition like this. This thing runs like a brand new motorcycle. Clutches, shifts, brakes, the suspension, everything on this feels like brand new. And it even has a stock original exhaust on it, center stand and everything. Usually they're all bastardized with Kirker pipes and just beat the shit. You're not gonna find a, a nicer original than this, man. Or if you do, buy it because they're becoming extremely rare and they're highly collectible. Thanks for watching. God bless America, and I feel the need for speed.